So, security, tax benefits, investment. Those are the three major reasons. Okay, I talk a little bit about my rich dad, poor dad story. My, my, why I call my rich dad, poor dad, is because my rich dad is still alive. He's still with us, and that's my father-in-law. And he's been kind of my mentor for a long time. He uh, had, had started buying property and actually was a, um, a, a, a cookware salesperson. Really good at it. You know, he sell those really uh, fancy cookware sets. And, and eventually he got into real estate. And he, but he had he'd always bought his homes and held them. And then he would buy another one and, and, and held them. Uh, sometimes he would sell them. But the, over, the, over the long haul, he was more of a buy and holder kind of guy. Uh, my, my poor dad, why I say that, uh, God rest his soul, is that, is that he, though he was a real estate attorney, didn't keep the property over the years. The first house that I remember in that I lived in is uh, when my dad moved from Frankfurt, Germany to Fort Knox, Kentucky, because I was being born and he wanted us to be, wanted me to be born in the United States. He got transferred from Frankfurt. He was a captain in the army and he went to Fort, uh, Fort Knox and that's where I was born at Ireland Army Hospital at Fort Knox. Uh, and so uh, then he, he moved out of the military and went into uh, civil law, real estate law, corporate law, and that was in California. He bought a house in San Mateo, California $17,000 in 1963, and it was a uh, it was a VA loan, so he zero in, zero down, and he bought that house. He got transferred with his company back east a few years later, and he sold that house for $27,000. So he did pretty well. He thought he was doing really well selling that house for $27,000, and he had zero into it, and he bought it for seventeen. Okay. Well, that house today is worth a million dollars. Um, that's down 20% from the $1.2 million that it was worth just a few years ago. Okay, so, and that house would have been paid off 10 years ago. You think about that 30 year mortgage, I'm 47. It would have been paid off 15 years ago. Think about that. He could have lived back in that house and he would have been an accidental millionaire, right? Because the house would have been long paid off, it worth a million dollars and he would have been an accidental millionaire, just that one house. And, or what he could have done is rented it out and lived over here uh, in Texas and rented it out for $2,500 a month, had a nice little tidy retirement income. So I talk about that because my, my rich dad was, uh, my, is, is my father-in-law, and guess what he's out doing right now? He's part of my team. He's still in, in his, his 70, uh, early 70s. He's still working real estate, and because I have a buyer that's ready to make an offer on a, on a home not far from here, uh, and I'm doing this, to, is he's, he's, he's part of my team, he's, he's out showing the property and he's getting the contract written. So, but over the years, he bought his properties and he held on to them. Or he would pull cash out and buy more. And he started buying in Texas long before I, started, uh, before I moved here. And so I asked him though, what did you do with your first house in San Diego, California? The kind of same kind of story. I bought it for fourteen thousand five hundred. He remembers he remembers the street address and all that kind of stuff. Remembers that. And, and I said, "Do you wish you'd kept it?" And he goes, "Darn, darn right! I wish I kept that house. That thing's worth a half million dollars now." So, um, I, I like to think about the fact that that uh, it's it's it doesn't take rocket scientists to understand the le value of leverage in real estate, and then also the long-term benefits, short-term, long-term benefits. Um, that, that, and that's why we're here today. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next thing that we want to talk about, chapter four, is the trust factor. Uh, and the trust factor, what I'm talking about, is uh, once again, people don't trust the industry. They don't trust the mortgage companies. They don't trust that, and it's natural because why? The news is pounded into our heads 